Good day. Welcome to Battle Ready. Today we have with us Christine Watkins, and we're going to talk a lot about the warning, but also about consecration to Our Lady. But let's begin first with a prayer in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hail, Holy Queen, Mother of Mercy, our life, our sweetness, and our hope. To thee do we cry, poor banished children of Eve. To you do we send up our sighs, mourning and weeping. In this valley of tears, turn then, most gracious advocate, thine eyes of mercy towards us, and after this our exile, show unto us the blessed fruit of thy womb, Jesus. O clement, O loving, O sweet Virgin Mary, pray, pray for, for us, O Holy Mother of God, time. that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. Amen. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, are noon. So welcome, Christine. Thank you. Thank you for having How me. How are you? I'm You're good. Welcome. I'm good. Great. Good. Today, we're going to talk about your book, The Warning. And as these weird things keep happening around the world, and it just seems like all these benchmarks are being hit. You know, when Jesus said, look at the signs of the times, wars, rumors of wars, famine, plagues, all these things, they're all coming to fruition. And so this warning coming from heaven, it's every day we're a day closer for sure. No one knows the exact time, but it seems like we're getting pretty close. Yes. It's interesting. One of the visionaries in the alleged apparitions of Garabandal, Spain, when she was asked when the warning would happen, she said when communism returned and when things are at their worst. And also, she also told someone there's a video of a nun who knew her shared in Spanish that it would happen after a synod in the church. So I'm just oh. curious. I'm asking myself and I'm asking God if this synod is potentially that. So and and there are many mystics who talk about it happening soon. Of course, we know that biblically soon can mean all variations yeah. of things. But I would say that. When you look at, as you say, the sign of the times, yes, we need we need to be prepared. I do believe it'll be in our lifetime, and I feel certain enough of that to say that much. Well, I do too, and one of the reasons I do is because the uh, visionaries in Medjugorje are my age, and in order for them to have these secrets revealed, they have to be alive, and that means we're talking about you know forty years, and they're in their nineties, so. It seems like it would be we're in approximate place that it could be it could, could be any day for that matter. So what should we glean from the warning? What what is the warning? Tell us what the warning is. And to piggyback on what you just said as well, the first three secrets the visionaries of Medjugorje have said are warnings. So just interesting to know if there's any corroboration there. We'll see. The warning is a moment in time. It's been prophesied by many different Catholic mystics. And since that first edition of the warning came out, I've actually discovered six more, one of oh, wow. them, which is really incredible. And one of them is on her way to hopefully canonization. And another one is Friar Augustine del Divino Corazon. And there are four others, very credible witnesses to this event. And what's uncanny is that all of these seers, those in the book, some of whom are blessed, and they have seen through God's eyes bits of the same exact moment. So what I'm about to say is going to piece together all of their different visions, and it all blends into one moment in time when everything goes black. So God gets our attention by suddenly there being no light whatsoever and earthquakes. And then suddenly there's a blinding light throughout the world. So no matter where you are, day is brighter than day and night becomes day. And then we all see wherever we are, a cross in the sky, a beaming cross, Jesus crucified. And through the wounds where he was nailed to the cross, Bright rays will penetrate the earth and go into each soul, illuminating every single person on earth. So this is irrespective of belief, of background. Every single person on earth will see themselves. They won't be aware of anything else around them. It'll be a, a moment frozen in time. So literally frozen. 
meaning if there's a plane flying in the air, it will stop. Or if a person's riding a bicycle, suddenly the bicycle will stop. So people will know God is in control of everything. He's in control of matter. And so there will be this moment, and in earthly time, it'll be 5 to 15 minutes. And it may seem like forever, according to the individual. The individual goes through their entire life in light of their sin. So a person will see everything they've done, and those sins that are confessed in the sacrament of reconciliation will be experienced differently. They won't be so painful. Um, and those in mortal sin will be extremely excruciating. And you see not only your sin, but the consequence of that sin, because sin reverberates outward. So it'll be a complete illumination of one's conscience. And then the person will also see, everyone on earth will see where they would go if they were to die right then. So if they're perfectly purified of all sin, they see that they would walk straight into heaven were they to die. If they have things they still need to be purified of, they see where they would go in purgatory. And if they are not in a state of grace, if they are in a state of mortal sin, they will know that they would go to hell. And in addition to this knowledge people will feel what it's like to be in that state. So they'll experience a bit of heaven feeling wise. They'll experience a bit of purgatory. They'll experience what it feels like to be in hell. And so that's very different. Is it not than our day-to-day -day existence? You know, I was walking close to hell or in it for much of my life. And I felt miserable a lot of the time, but I certainly never felt what it was like to be cut off completely from God. So mm -hmm. hence, huge wake up call, because it's a correction of the conscience of the world. And no one after that will be able to say in good conscience, as it were, that there is no God, or that there is no sin, or that they don't know what their sins are. So people's every person's conscience will be set back to a baseline of what is truth. Yes. So nobody could say, for example, like abortion isn't killing a baby. Like That's they would right. understand, they, everyone would understand what is God's truth. And then they get to make a decision if they're going to follow it or not. Exactly. Is that correct? And what's I very think interesting, interesting given yeah. our free will is never violated. He still gives us the chance to either choose to be with him or not. Exactly. There's never a moment where he says you have to do this or you have to do that. That's that's not how God created us. He created created us with complete free will. So he'll say, here's here's the truth. And then they'll know that that was Jesus. They won't necessarily know where the next Catholic church is. So that'll be the job of faithful Catholics who aren't bowled over by the whole thing and too stunned by it to pick themselves up and move because that'll be our job. Pick yourself up, think about others. To these long lines of confession is what several mystics have seen happen afterwards. What's really interesting at that decision point where people will know truth is that Satan will be blinded and bound for 40 days, six and a half weeks, when there will be completely free free will, as it were, because we have free will right now, but we also are tempted left and right. We will not be tempted by the devil. We'll still have our free will, but there'll be this grace period, this beautiful moment. And what's interesting, and we'll talk about this in the next show, I hope, but the warning, I believe, is the sixth seal of Revelation. This grace period afterwards is the seventh, where there's rest and silence. There's a moment of choice. And this is a critical, critical moment because the beginning of that moment, people will be so stunned that they'll make potentially very good choices. But being that we're all human and we'll still have human nature, we can, even with the devil chained, during those 40 days, we can move back into our old habits. And when we move back into maybe watching the lies on television, or we move back into drinking or whatever it is, our conscience is going to be clouded. We're going to believe the media, which is going to say it was just something physical. It was a solar flare. We don't know what it was. It certainly wasn't God. Ignore it. And then people will turn away from it, even though they were shown truth and they were shown themselves. 
it's surprising to, to, to think that that could somebody would be that dense. But we also don't realize that the manipulation of who knows the Antichrist could be on the scene at that point, And he's going to have great power to deceive. So we don't know because we've never gone through this. And I guess you could say that would be the one time that God did say, you're all going to do this. There's no opting out. <laughs> you're going to see how your life looks in yes. my eyes. And then you get to pick and choose if you want to follow me or not. Now, this is so fascinating to me. I'm the only priest in my county. Oh. So, yeah, when you consider that, what if suddenly two, three hundred thousand oh, so people sorry. decide that we want to come into the Catholic Church? It's not we're not going to be able to do the RCIA nine month program. It's going to be more like the first century, like we're just going to be out baptizing thousands. The other thing that I heard from a priest over in Ireland at a monastery is that the a diocese of Garen Vandal, wherever it is, I don't know if it's the Garen Vandal, Diocese, but where that's located, their bishop and priests have a handbook put together for how to go forward once this event happens. Like they've got protocols in place. Oh, they've already thought about it. Oh my. Nobody else really has. I mean, if I bet you, if you asked huh. the two, three, four hundred bishops of this country that are running dioceses. Do you have a plan for after the warning? I bet you 75% would go, what is the warning? And that's scary that, that there'll be no plan. It'll be everybody's, you know, freewheeling it and just hoping they're doing the right thing. So, um, but we've thought about it here. I'm, I would like to get a copy of that manual from Gary Bernal. So I'm going to, I'm going to try to see if I can find somebody. Well, I, don't, I don't know if you've read my mind, but please, can, can we be in touch I'd about love, that? Yes, because that's I extremely important. Yes. Yes. Because uh, there's another woman who wrote this, I don't know what you'd call it. It's sort of like a, um, uh, it's it's a, it's this, it's not a book, but it's almost like a dossier of what God has revealed to her about what's coming. And I read that while I was on retreat at this monastery in Ireland. And the whole time I'm reading it, I'm thinking, this is so crazy. Could this possibly be, be coming? And the, uh, Father Prior of the monastery, it's a very holy monastery, that they pray for priests night and day before the Eucharist. And the last day I was leaving, I had a meeting with him and I said, my, my, my heart was saying, you should talk to him about this. I said, my goodness, he's a little hum, holy friar in Ireland. Wow, he wouldn't know about this. And then all of a sudden I blurted out, I go, have you heard of this writing about these birth pangs of this coming thing? And he said, oh, that's from so-and-so, isn't it? Yes, she translated all of our writings into French. I go, oh, so you know it? He said, I know it, and we believe it's true. Isn't that amazing? But it all has to do with how this is going to unroll, what people think will come, and how we're going to have to be dealing with bringing all these people in. Yes. So different mystics have been shown what that period of time looks like, and as you say, mass baptisms. So the all, all the more reason for the lay faithful right now to really be catechized themselves because the the priests aren't going to have time to do the catechizing they're not going to have i mean the the mass baptisms are throwing the water out to everyone and father and you know you'll be sitting with hopefully people handing you sandwiches and showing where you where the bathroom is but it's a it'll be a long line of confession just mm -hmm. confession 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 and so lay people, we have to think, and I, I can't wait to find out about this manual, will have to be ready. And that means not just ca well catechized, but having a lesson plan, having uh, rosaries available, having Bibles available, having, you know, Bible studies, all these things that we've just taken for granted in the church, we have to be ready lickety split to say, here's what you do. Here's what this means. Let's go. Because if we don't catch them in that period of time where the devil's chained, we will lose them. We'll lose them. Yeah. Yeah. And that would be, that would be the worst scenario. Yeah. So yeah, we have to we have to be getting ready. And what I tell people all the time is, you know, you may not have all the details of what's happening, but if you're praying on a daily basis for you know the people that will go through this, uh, and when this happens, that the spirit, the Holy Spirit, will be present to these churches and these priests and these parishes, then you know that will be enough to get the graces and the 
and whatever God wants to do, he's going to do. You just have to have people open, ready and willing to step in and be the vessel of grace. I often think of when you read the writings of Emmerich and a few other mystics, they talk about when Our Lady was a child, she used to always pray for the woman that would bear the savior of the world. So she was praying for herself for all those years. Oh my goodness. Uh, and it certainly paid off. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. Yes, I think, of, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, no, I was just gonna say, St. Faustina. Yes. She had some sort of vision of this, this morning and yes. she's a saint, canonized saint. Yes. So that's interesting you bring that up because she actually, well, she had a vision of the warning, but she also experienced it herself. So yes. she, she saw the cross in the sky. She saw the rays coming from the wounds, but she also was told by Jesus that this is the one of the last moments of mercy before the time of justice. So this is a huge wake up call. We're going to have this moment of the warning. Then we're also going to have these last minute attempts, right? We please believe, please believe because we have the miracle that's going to be on the place of the pines where Mary first appeared in Garabandal. And then we have also in Medjugorje, the promised miraculous sign. And all of the visionaries keep saying, don't wait for the sign, repent and convert now because it may be too late by that time. And so it could happen in Guadalupe too. There could be something on the Tilma that shows. So all of mm -hmm. God is going to give multiple signs to say, please, at the last minute, come. And so because after that, as St. Faustina was told, we move into a time of justice. And that's where the sheep are separated from the goats people will have made their choice on earth, right? Which is, which is a very unique time in history because when you've made your choice and you've been shown the truth and the warning and you've been shown everything, you've been given every opportunity and you say no. Mm -hmm. I say no to God. I say yes to sin. I'm not buying it. I do whatever I want. Then, unfortunately, the soul has become very, very dark. And then that soul lives under God's justice, right? They have a really hard time accessing the mercy. You know, they, 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 they get stuck. And mm -hmm. the good news for those who choose God is we can get, I mean, not that this is possible, but to, to use this language figuratively, we can be more stuck in his grace, it's going to be very hard after the warning for those of us who say, whatever you want, God, I'm so sorry. I will follow you. Please uh, purge me of all that is not you. It's going to be hard if we really mean that to suddenly become very dark. And right. so the thing about what ex St. Faustina experienced is she not only experienced um, the cross in the sky, which is part of the warning, but she was given the full knowledge of her soul and we know from her diary how holy she was and the lord said to her you are a daughter of complete trust he wants a lot more saint faustina's because she went through horrific things she was so ill the sisters in her convent made fun of her she was a walking corpse for a while she smelled so badly that people didn't want to be near her so just imagine what she went through she was told to start an order by the lord and it totally failed it just never happened and she died but she died in complete trust anyway mm. and that happened posthumously so so many things are amazing about her and when she had her personal illumination of conscience she said that she did not realize that every little word we speak would be accounted for. And she said how overwhelming it was to be before the thrice holy God. So, <laughs> I mean, I think of how I speak, right? I think of everyday snips or quips or ways I'm ungrateful. And, and that's, that's quite overwhelming, I must say. And when she did see uh, these very minor sins in the presence of God, she was so horrified. I mean, she literally was sick to see how they were so offensive. And that is something that really struck me because we we tend to, we have, as fallen human creatures, we tend to have this habit of thinking, 
well, I don't kill anybody. I haven't raped anybody and I'm not a terrorist. So I, I think I'm a good person. And really, the benchmark is Jesus and Mary. That's who we should be measuring ourselves, not against Hitler. For heaven's sake, if you, you better be better than Hitler. No, you should be saying, am I doing as, as well as Mary and Jesus? Yeah. And then we'd be very quick to say, not even close. So we must be constantly working on weeding out these, even the little sins. Like Because if she was saw the offense before God of the tiny sins, and we probably do dozens of them every day, if not more, you know that would be in the when we see this ourselves it's going to be horrifying to the point where we're, we're, we won't realize until we see it and then it's going to be it's going to be a painful experience so one of the things you can do if you're listening is you can pray every day lord purge my soul of all the offenses before this happens whether it be the warning or whether it be my personal judgment before you at the end of life so that when i do stand before you my soul would be clean and the purgation would be done now then don't be upset if you have a lot of trials come your way because that's how we purgate our sins. Um, somebody told me once they were praying for a profound leapfrog into God's holiness. And as they started praying for this to happen, their whole life fell apart. And they go, Father, what's happening? I go, you're getting what you wanted. And they go, that's not what I wanted. Oh, yes, it is. But you didn't perceive that to be. So because it's much worse if we have to go through it in purgatory. The, the other thing that we have to be praying for is for the priests, because mm -hmm. ironically, sometimes the priests are the most stubborn when it comes to thinking about things that are mystical, and they tend to be very pragmatic, and they don't want to hear about anything that hasn't you know, been literally proclaimed in the scriptures with great detail. And so if you bring, I've had even friends that I bring this up to and they're like, that's ridiculous. Why do you even fuss with that? And I say, okay, but you know, what if it isn't, <laughs> you know, like, do you want to be blindsided? So pray for your priests that they would have open hearts that indeed, whatever God wants them to be doing, they would be doing. You know, and I, I hope this helps. I mean, we may have another edition of the warning come out, but if, if priests or, or lay people or anyone is, is doubting all of this, well, then I'll, I'll be honest with you. You're doubting what the church says because you have, for instance, Sister Anna Ali of the Most Holy Eucharist. Now, her bishop has a, given her writings the imprimatur, and she was a victim soul, and she saw Jesus and spoke to him, and he told her there would be a warning. And her bishop is, uh, this is from Kenya, and he's working at getting her process of canonization started. And then, you know, we have all these mystics. We have, as I mentioned, Friar Augustine del Divino Corazon, and he is the co-founder of a religious organization. And he was told in detail about the warning and uh, things that would come afterwards. And his writings too have the imprimatur. And he, his congregation, is, or his organization that he co-founded is Los Cierradores de las Reparaciones. I'm not going to say it right in Spanish, but the Servants <laughs> of the Reparation. And so basically, if a person says that is all hogwash, I don't believe any of it, then if you take that to its final extreme, you say, well, all of these mystics are completely wrong. And the church was completely wrong in saying that there was some validity to what they're all saying. Right. And Pope Pius IX, who is now a saint. Yes. Another one who talked about it. And the other thing that struck me is when you were talking about, given that this generation that goes through this is going to be given this profound gift, and it is a gift and a mercy to have this illumination of conscience, this warning, you know, there's that phrase, to whom much is given, much is required. And so if you've been given this and no other generation ever got this, you know, in, in the 2000 years of Christianity, this would be the only time it's been given. And it is a wake up call. And if you choose not to wake up, to me, that sounds like what the angels went through. This is your your big one, one and done decision. What are you going to do? And I'm not saying that somebody couldn't be rescued after that moment, but it's going to be a lot harder given that they've been given this tremendous mercy that they rejected. Yeah, it is. It is going to be harder. So, you know, right now is the wake up call and heeding what Mary has been asking of us. 
I would say, would you, Father, is the most important thing. I mean, in Medjugorje, she has the five stones that she said, these are your stones to throw at the enemy. It's not to fear. It's and it's not to wait either. I fear that a lot of people are saying, well, I don't I'm going to count on the warning to fix my husband or, or fix my kids or fix me. That would be the wrong thing to do. It would be to take action right now, meaning holy action which is not to fear, which is to pray, especially the rosary, to pray from the heart every day, which is to go to mass as frequently as possible, which is to read the Bible, which is to go to confession monthly and to fast if we're not sickly on bread and water on Wednesdays and Fridays. And those are the five stones that Mother Mary of Medjugorje said that would blind and get Satan out of our lives. And and that's really the idea, to bring grace, push out Satan, That's the whole point that we're here to help save our souls and save others. Just to focus on that and get rid of everything else that gets in the way and we'll be fine. Yeah. And if you're praying every day for the conversion of your loved ones, when this thing finally happens, if it's in their lifetime, all those graces converge onto that moment to bring them into the conversion. So you don't want to wait. Thank you so much, Christine. It's been a pleasure to have you on. We're going to continue with uh, another show, we're gonna talk about Marian consecration. Let me give you my blessing, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. The almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you for being with us, we'll be back again.